uh, to be here. I uh, want to thank uh, Mr. Harish for inviting me to share uh, uh, what I want to be speaking today. Uh, and today I want to be actually talking about um, uh, a topic which is very close to my heart, which is about how do you lead in an upside down world? How do you lead in an upside down world? Uh, even before I start, uh, those of you who've got your video on, if my audio is clear, could you give me a thumbs up? If my audio is clear, awesome. Thank you. Good to hear. So I want to be sharing with you about leadership uh, and in particular, how do you lead in an upside down world? There's so many books written about leadership. There's a lot of theory on leadership, a lot of definitions on leadership. But when you travel the journey called life, and when you go through certain incidents, I think the best teacher is life itself, is life itself. So um, we are all in a, in, in, a, in a way walking through unprecedented times. You must have heard this word over the last two weeks, three weeks, very often, unprecedented, right? Uh, no, none of us have lived through a pandemic before. And by God's grace, we will all survive this pandemic. And we will have a good story to tell, not just our children, but maybe our grandchildren. And if you're fortunate enough, our great grandchildren, guess what? You know, we lived during the pandemic. Uh, we lived through COVID-19. We lived through a lockdown and we came out of it. So we'll have a story to tell and hopefully we'll have lots of lessons to tell. But today, as I, as I share with you about leading in an upside down world, I'm not going to be sharing any theory to you. I'm not going to be sharing anything that you learn from MBA schools, but I'm going to share with you through an incident that happened in my own life. Through an incident that happened in my own life. And I want to take you back to 20th of June, 2016, 12.15 AM. Say it again, 20th of June, 2016, 12.15 AM. Me and my wife were in a hospital room of a very famous hospital uh, in the south of India called CMC Hospital, a college and hospital, Christian Medical College, uh, uh, University and Hospital, right? College and Hospital at, the, uh, at a town called Bellor, one of the best hospitals in India. At 12.15 a.m., there was a knock on the hospital door. A few hours before that, my daughter, who was 13 year old. I've got a son and I got twin daughters. Uh, my, one of my twin daughters, Janita, um, she had been admitted in this hospital for about 20 odd days uh, up until then. And about 7.30, the pre, you know, on the 19th of June, 7.30 PM, she was rushed into the ICU. But at 12.15 AM, my wife and me were alone in that hospital room. There was a knock on the door. I opened the door. There was a nurse who was standing there. And this nurse told me, come immediately to the ICU because the HOD of the ICU would like to talk to you. You can imagine, I was scared by then. I was nervous. The room was air conditioned. The hospital was air conditioned, but I was perspiring. The walk from the room to the hospital was probably 300 meters or 400 meters. Couldn't have been more than that. Every step was a, was a difficult step. It was a step full of fear. It was a step full of anxiety. And I reached the ICU. And even before I could reach the ICU, the HOD of the ICU was standing at the entrance of the ICU. She looked at me eye to eye. And she said, Rajiv, your daughter is very sick. She's got into septic shock. Her organs are shutting down. Be prepared for the worst. Would you want to, would you want to tell your wife? Or would you want me to share this news to your wife? I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to speak. You see, I'm used to talking to large crowds of people. But to go back to that hospital room and to tell this one line to my wife was one of the most difficult communication I have ever made in my whole life. See what happened actually. That, um, why did my daughter get admitted? Why did my daughter get admitted? My daughter got admitted because we discovered that she had a slight swelling on her forehead and that swelling did nothing to her at all. The swelling did nothing to her at all. But 
on a on a checkup with a doctor for when she had a fever just a viral fever the doctor said it doesn't look alarming but you may want to take an x-ray just to check x-ray went to scan cd scan mri scan some order like that then they said biopsy when they did the biopsy it was inconclusive they said we have to do a full body scan a pet scan if you may they did the pet scan only to find out there was a larger tumor in the retroperitoneal area which is right in the center of her abdomen and it was placed between the intestines the arteries the aorta all the vital uh, organs and it was a surprise to the doctors how this larger tumor did not create any trouble for my daughter and they said the only way to find out the condition of that tumor whether it was malignant or benign was to extract that tumor they said it was a risky surgery but it can be done so the surgery lasted 7 hours on a 13 year old girl they said you could be discharged in a week but instead of being one surgery and a week she was in hospital for 88 days and she had in total in totality she had five surgeries she was in the icu four times she was in the life support system four times she had several bags surrounding both sides of her and she lost almost about 35% of her body weight and almost became like a vegetable and to make matters worse the biopsy results and the biopsy results was that it showed that she had a rare form of cancer called ganglioneuroblastoma and if she survived the severe post operative complications and that's why she was she got into septic shock because one of her arteries was sacrificed and the blood flow was not happening and therefore all the post operative complications if she by chance survived the post operative complications then she would have to fight cancer which is chemotherapy and radiation and everything else as you can imagine this experience changed my perspective and taught me several lessons including lessons on leadership and these are some of the lessons that i want to share with you when my world went upside down when my family's world went upside down what were those lessons that we learned of leadership and i want to share share it with you maybe some of it you know then it's reiteration for you but most of it is learning on a first hand basis the first lesson that i want to share with you by the way i should have changed the slide this is my daughter in hospital when we almost lost her right and this is her situation she's on a life support system just here the first lesson that i want to share with you is that the certainty of life lies in its uncertainty the certainty of life lies in its uncertainty and this is a truth which is true to business it's true to careers it's true to relationships you know when i go back to 2016 we were not informed about what was going to come through we started the year very excited you know as you start a new year there's lots of hopes there's lots of aspiration we had in fact even planned a trip a good holiday in the month of april may uh, to karabi and a few other islands right but adversity just came in suddenly uncertainty came in suddenly i mean look at where we are in life today right did you ever expect that you would be locked down in your house did you ever expect that there would be a a virus which is a which is so small and which is so invisible to the naked eye but it's brought the global community to its knees and we don't have a solution as yet and this is interesting because as a as a global community and and where we find ourselves i think we have found we are in a stage where technology has progressed to its zenith we are at a stage where education uh, has advanced so much we know so much we are at a stage where science has 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 gone forward so much that even when you compare the life spans to even a just a decade ago the life spans have increased so much but yet when it comes to managing this virus at this point all that we know is wash your hands several times a day maintain social distancing and lock yourself in the house and all these are good things and necessary things but in my mind we don't seem to have an answer just as yet and you see that's where i think as a leader it is critical for us not to take the current state as for granted 
but always prepare for an upside down situation always prepare for adversity always prepare for eventuality you see the test of leadership is not about how you deal with the um, uh, with certainty not how you deal with surety right not with how you deal with certainty or surety right but it's how you deal with uncertainty how you deal with um, the unknown how you deal with uh, you, uh, with with these interruptions that come and 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 you know almost wreck your boat that, that is the test of leadership so the first lesson is that the certainty of life lies in its uncertainty the second lesson that i want to share with you and which i learned was the importance of creating networks the importance of creating networks when at see we live in mumbai right so when we got the di- uh, the advice by our local doctors here in mumbai that a biopsy was required and as you can make out from my name i'm basically we are basically from the south uh, we've been living in mumbai uh, for 10 years as of now in 2016 it was 6 years and we had no real reason to go to doctors and hospitals so we didn't know too much about the medical scene here in mumbai and always there was the fear right i mean this whole medical commercialism and things like that and we didn't want to fall prey to that but more than that we wanted to go to a place where which would have the best facilities would have the best medical facilities the best medical expertise and and the only way we could make that decision was to actually access the networks that we have built so carefully and when we access the networks and we reached out and said hey we're going through the situation uh, do you know any would you suggest the right place to go could you check with your contacts so we accessed our uh, networks because we didn't want to take um, Uh, uh, an in an ill informed decision and we achieved that task because of the networks because of reaching out with relevant people in our circle of influence and i'm so happy about hr milestone which is a network of hr individuals and i think it in times like this at all times but especially in times like this i think the networks is what keeps you going it's a network which informs you it's a network which educates you it's a network which builds your skill it's a network which leads you into the right direction you see to be effective as a leader and i'm talking about leadership not just leader of people which is an important facet of leadership but i'm talking about leaders of leaders of self as well right when i say leader i'm talking comprehensively i'm talking holistically leader of self and leader of people you see as a leader it is important who you surround yourself with who you surround yourself with you know I, i'm sure you've heard this we become like the people that we hang out with we become like the people we hang out with so it's very critical that you surround yourself with the right network it's very important that you build this network it's an investment of time it's an investment of effort you know and in an in a normal steady state you know we are so busy right we wake up in the morning we probably some of us exercise but then we rush to work we work hard as much as we can uh, and if you live in a large city like mumbai or bangalore or chennai or what you had to fight traffic you have to allocate time for that as well right you finish your work then you fight traffic you come back home uh, you know chat a little bit with your family watch some tv or have dinner go to sleep repeat 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 and then we say where is the time i want to tell you in life please do not sacrifice the important because of the urgent do not sacrifice the important because of the urgent and building networks is an important aspect as a leader so for us this importance of of accessing information through the networks that we built was a very very important aspect moving on to the third lesson which i want to take you to you see leaning on strength from within and without both are important it's not just leaning from strength from within it's not only about leaning from strength from people around you but both are extremely important when i go back to my own story in 2016 it would be an understatement to say that the days at the hospital at velour the cancer treatment cause us to feel physically exhausted emotionally tired and mentally drained but the fact was we had to keep on believing 
keep doing what was required even if it meant just putting one foot ahead of the other foot right even if it meant that we had to just push through the bad diagnosis that we got right um, or the bad reports we we got you know and when i look back i realized that how did we go through this period right and i think it was about drawing strength you know i am a believer in god so you know as a family we drew strength from god and we drew strength from each other as a family we drew strength and encouragement from friends and i want to tell you as leaders right you can you can you can read a lot about leaders you can do mbas on leadership you can do all that right but leadership requires resilience resilience is to you know to to cope with change to cope with an upside down world to bounce back you know you require resilience leadership requires dexterity dexterity is strength and endurance to swim against the tide right that's what leadership requires and 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 the ability to swim and the ability to push through disappointments and discouragement and difficult circumstances is an essential aspect of leadership you see this leadership these leadership moments when your world is upside down right requires you to draw strength from within and also from people around you right so who do you who are the people around you right do you, and and when i look at look back at my life at that moment there were two types of people around us one empathized with us and said oh so sorry why do such bad things happen to you people are good why do such good so sorry so sad and you know you do i mean honestly they didn't add value in our life the other set of people were people who empathized with us they may not have said anything to us but they just stood with us they were silent and for us that was strength just knowing people were there with us right or they would do things like um going and getting the report from the lab or going and getting the medicine right or you know i've got two other kids i said right looking after them and often i need to make the trip my wife and my daughter janita who was in hospital were in vellore but i was in mumbai so i would spend three days in vellore four days in mumbai vice versa and, and two other young kids there so some would reach out to my other kids right so people who empathize and people who sympathize and i think it's very important don't be so proud that you don't want to get help from people right it's good to get people but be selective with from whom you are getting your help from not people who sympathize but people who empathize with you right so that's the third aspect the fourth aspect is staying positive and doing what you need to stay afloat staying positive and doing what you need to stay afloat you see during those 88 days at velor at uh, cmc velor uh, one of the best hospitals in india maybe even in asia i mean based on the expertise of services that they do they have they have on a day about 8000 plus um, outpatients in a day right the best hospital the best place but was perhaps the most trying times of our life as you can imagine you see the hard reality hit me and the reality was i no longer was in control over my daughter's recovery right i realized then that a good designation i had a great designation working for a large organization uh, you know fancy salary good perks great colleagues everything was good but i realized that my designation my network at that point my net worth right my education could not in a way improve my daughter's recovery could not and i had no control over that situation the only thing I, and i think for me that was a lesson right as a leader please stop worrying about what you cannot control and start focusing on what you can control right focus on what you can control don't worry about i mean there's no point in worrying about it's easy to say don't worry but no point in worrying in what you cannot control the only thing that you know we could do during the time was to fight hard and that fighting hard meant stay positive the choice was uh the choice we made was to face the, i mean not force the issue not i mean i the more i pushed the doctors nothing could happen right so you can't force the issue at that time but just stay positive stay afloat right believe and start expecting and and, and look at the small things that are happening around and, and and look for positives the key for us was to take one day at a time you see as a leader there will be moments when you don't have control exactly now 
exactly now today nobody frankly has control nobody frankly has control right now right we're all trying to do what we can in a situation like this we're all trying to stay positive we're all trying to stay afloat that's what we are trying to do at this point in time and that's the reality you will face situations like this as a leader right and I, like i told you a little while earlier there's no point focusing on what you cannot control but in fact just focus on what you can control right let me move on to the next lesson the next lesson was this often it gets worse before it gets better remember this often it gets worse before it gets better you know a few days after my daughter's first surgery janita's first surgery um they said don't give her any solid food right don't give up maybe give her some water because they had the surgery in you know in our abdomen area intestines and kidney and all those places right they said, don't give up what just give a little water sips of water but nothing solid after two days uh, the doctors uh, checked the wound and checked her recovery and said yeah i think she's doing better now you can start semi solids mashed food you can actually give her so we did give her the mashed food and and uh, like i told you a little while earlier they sacrificed uh, an artery as a result uh, the they thought the blood will flow through another artery did not happen uh, as a result the wound inside the abdomen not the external inside the abdomen it opened up it was called a perforation and as a consequence uh, you know it created severe severe complications to put it lightly and all this time i was in touch with a cousin of mine who was a doctor uh, who passed out of this wonderful institution called uh, cmc velour turned his masters but he's based in adelaide so I, i used to be in touch with him and he used to be in touch with the hospital because he's a alumni of that hospital right so he was he had access to reports and things like that so when this happened when this event happened and they rushed her back for the second surgery i was in touch with my cousin and he told me a line and he said he said rajiv be prepared it will get worse before it gets better and i was hoping he'll say something nice i didn't expect him to say this it will get worse before it gets better and that's exactly what happened every time we expected things to get better janita deteriorated okay it seemed we would get drowned by the tsunami of adversity right our world had gone upside down and it was it was starting to spin at this point in time we had to hold on and more critically janita had to hold on and for me the lesson to all of you is this right leadership is no cup of tea nor is it a piece of cake leadership is no cup of tea nor is it a piece of cake you will be tested severely you will be tested severely we think leadership is a very glamorous word it is not glamorous right we think leadership is a designation it is not you're so far away leadership is hard work leadership is tough and it will test you very severely you will be tested in every way right but but you got to hang in there you got to hang in there you got to be disciplined and determined say i'm not going to quit i'm going to hang in there right even if it means hanging in there by the skin of your teeth you hang in there you see throwing in the towel anyone can do that right quitting anyone can do that but staying on despite the pressure and the oppressive conditions is really a sign of authentic leadership that for me is a sign of you look at authentic leaders look at great leaders of the past i mean just look at gandhi ji for a minute right i mean the kind of opposition that he faced but he didn't quit in fact he started a quit india movement he didn't quit right and for me that is a sign of authentic leadership often it gets worse before it gets better i want to tell you i mean i don't the little that i've been reading about covid 19 i'm not a scientist i'm not a medical professional but the little that i've been reading and i look at the global impact of covid 19 it tells me that it will get worse before it gets better look at what's happening in singapore for a minute right now they've they've locked down again till june it's the third phase that they're going through right and you will find that at your work as well right but just when you think things are getting better it's supposed to get better what is getting worse that just may be a sign that you are on the right track right so remember often it gets worse before it gets better moving on you got to adapt to the new normal instead of fighting the change adapt to the new normal instead of fighting the change the world has changed for us right uh, i mean just compared to a month ago month and a half it's changed you know so, when i look back at two months ago 
I remember I used to complain about the traffic on Mumbai roads. Now I miss the traffic on Mumbai roads, right? Uh, I, I miss the crowded trains of Mumbai, local trains, right? I mean, we miss that. I used to complain about getting up early and going to the airport. Man, I, I wish I can get up early and go to the airport. But guess what? Life's changed. Life has changed. The season has changed. And when I go back to my own incident in 2016, we entered 2016, like I told you, blue skies, not a care in the world. We didn't have the slightest clue of what 2016 was holding for us. We had dreams, we had aspirations, we had a fancy trip that was planned for us. The airplane bookings were made, the hotel bookings were made, exotic islands, great restaurants, right? But instead of checking into those luxurious hotels, we checked into CMC Hospital Vellore. Instead of going into those uh, indulging in those beautiful cuisines that we planned and saw in our mind, we had to face the reality of ICU and life support system and chemotherapy and radiation. Would I have chosen that situation? Definitely not. But frankly, in life, tell me, do you have a choice? You don't have a choice in many things. Did you choose that you'll be locked down right now? No, you didn't. You didn't. Not did I. Right? But life doesn't give you a choice very often. But how you respond to life is far more important. You can sit and crib and say, you know, I, I am not going to agree. My life has not changed. I don't believe in lockdown. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You can't do that. That, that, is, that is stupidity. Excuse my language, right? You can't do that, right? But the moment you allow yourself and, and, and say, you know what? I am not going to be held hostage to the past. The past is gone. I'm in the present right now. This is a new normal. The moment you start accepting the new normal, you'll identify the conditions the new normal presents. And you'll also be able to identify opportunities that the new normal presents. And therefore, you'll prepare yourself for the present and uh, be proactive for the future. But the more you deny and resist, right, you'll miss out those opportunities. Right? I'll tell you, I'm telling you, our world has changed in many ways. Our world has changed in many ways. I don't know about where you come from. Maybe you're in the plant there in Gujarat, right? Maybe your life may not change, but there will be some changes there. But, but I think work from home, more people are going to be working from home, uh, even in a post-COVID world, right? Um, how would, you know, I think this whole digital communication that we are indulging, indulging in right now, right? I think it's going to become a part and parcel of the new normal. It'll, it'll sophisticate. You'll get better ways of way we do digital communication, the way we do training, right? It's going to happen that way. Already in the pre-COVID world, we were hiring people digitally. But I think in the post-COVID world, we'll be doing most of an employee onboard, onboarding process digitally. Right? So I think it's going to be a lot of change. But if we are not going to accept the new normal, we'll become redundant. Right? So accept the new normal. Don't fight it. The faster you make the transition, the better it is. Moving on. The next uh, principle that I want to talk to you about leading through an upside down world is the importance of being emotionally anchored. Emotionally anchored. Being emotionally anchored. You see, with every passing day, and I go back to my own story, Every passing day, every prognosis, every diagnosis, the utter helplessness and the seeming hopelessness of the situation set off within me and my family a roller coaster of emotions. You see, there can be nothing more traumatizing for a parent to see their child fighting for life. Nothing more traumatizing. And what was most, most uh, annoying for me and and really made me feel of no worth, worthless, was when my, my daughter would ask for a drop of water. But the doctors would say, no, you can't give her the water. You can't give her the water. And I, and I sat there thinking, oh my God, what's the point? And to be honest with you, there were moments that I thought, is it worth living? Is it worth to be alive? You can't give your daughter even this, right? Then what is the point, right? But I'm so glad that I didn't succumb to those emotions. I did not allow my emotions to hijack, uh, hijack me. See, the problem with allowing your emotions to get the better of you is that your emotions obstruct you from taking the right kind of decisions and, and initiating the right set of actions, right? But leaders need to manage their emotions. And there are so many studies. The emotional state of a team is largely a reflection of the leader's emotional state. I'll say that again. The emotional state of a team is largely a reflection of the leader's emotions. 
and that's why it's so important right self awareness are you aware of what emotions why why are you happy sometimes why are you sad sometimes why are you so full of energy sometimes why are you so down sometimes right why you, so what is driving those moods what are those triggers you know you got to be self aware we talk about self actualization right you know are we pursuing self actualization i think this group is because that's why they're connecting in a in a medium like this but introspect on this question what's your big audacious goal that you're pursuing right are you just working for a salary well anybody can work for a salary but are you working to create something you see there are two types of people there are the creators and the consumers right the consumers are always consuming stuff they're not creating right and and the fact is the consumers add very less value in fact they are spending more the creators are creating value and when they create value others consume it and because when others consume it more value is created to them right be a creator of value not just a consumer consuming stuff right so self actualization what about emotional expression now if our emotional expression is less our emotion goes forward and the content comes behind so if i'm talking let's say to jisha for example right now and i want to tell jisha hey you know what i think this project could have been done better but instead of saying that i'm saying jisha why is it that every time you are you make these mistakes can't you do something properly now what happened i'm saying the same thing to jisha except that my emotion went ahead the content came behind how do you think jisha is going to re- respond to this jisha is, she she is she is getting connected to the emotion and she's like why is rajiv so rude every time i think he doesn't like me right uh, he is a horrible person now what's happened in the whole process the content is lost the content the project has not been completed now in, now what's happened a personal conflict has happened which is very often um it, it is brewing between people and one day it will it will open up so how you how are you are you focusing on your emotions and keeping your regulating your emotions and getting the content out emotion regulation uh, emotional expression very important what about decision making decision making is the single largest problems most teams and most individuals face you know why not because they don't know how to make decisions we have enough courses on that everybody knows right but everybody doesn't do and the reason for that is emotions come in the way what if i take this decision and it backfires what if i do this decide to do this and everybody laughs at me what if i do this and people scold me so i won't take any decision or i'll take it later what have you done you procrastinated the decision or you're delayed in taking the decision or this is a problem across the hierarchy and across organizations and therefore we don't take the right decision or we take a poor quality decision and what's the problem emotion emotion of fear emotion of uh, what will others think about me right those emotions so we have to segregate those emotions look at the problem holistically you know and from and and be able to objectively take an uh, solution so therefore i want to say we, it's very important for us to be emotionally anchored stress management can, is there a world without stress please show me i'll i'll pay you a million dollars if you you show me a stress free world there is no stress free world you know I, i think that's why they say rest in peace right because that maybe that's the world where we will have no stress but on a serious note um stress is a reality how do you handle stress then well you segregate the emotions again look at the situation and uh without any bias or without any perception you're able to you know uh, not be impulsive uh, with reality testing deal with the situation rather than say oh my god i, I don't know how i'm going to do this i'm not how i'm going to do this and just you know crumble down with with stress so being emotionally anchored is is a must as a leader especially in an upside down world moving on it's about celebrating progress it's about celebrating progress you see in my situation with my daughter's situation there were not many good uh, occasions for us to celebrate uh, her progress uh, that was the reality of it i mean every report was negative there was a moment like i told you you know uh, uh, be prepared for the worst right and there were thoughts running in my mind which were crazy i mean i just i, I in fact i called up few my sisters and i called up my uncles and i called up two or three people and i said hey you know what this is what could happen anything can happen i mean that was the situation but there were we found situations which were positive which otherwise we would not we would have missed it but we celebrated that for example um when my, when the doctor said it's the situation seems without hope but the next day by god's grace she made a bit of recovery and the doctor said i would not say she is 
completely without hope what did what did the doctor say i would not say that she is completely without hope doesn't mean she's recovered she still in a critical position but the doctor didn't say hopeless completely without not completely without hope which means at least one 5% hope is there so we celebrated that said wow thank you know thank god that we've got this hope you know and they would come in and she she was immobile and just not able to turn this side that side the wound was open uh, you know because after five surgeries they said we can't you know the wound is we can't put it together the skin has become like butter if you put it it will tear again so it has to be open it was very 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 sad situation but the doctors would come and say she has to get up from the cot and take three steps and go sit down in the chair because her muscles will lose the ability to function otherwise she was already on physiotherapy that exercise would require two people on either sides to hold her two other people to hold the tubes and help her to take these three steps each step she would be breathless and she would profusely be perspiring and she would cry because it was a painful process every time she moved it was painful but when she made those three steps and sat down guess what we did we celebrated right so i want to tell you as leaders you know very often we are aware that there are two roles that we actually play one is the role of a vision caster where we cast the big vision and say this is what our vision is and you know uh, we 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 announce the vision this is what our team is going to do this is what our organization is going to achieve that's one role the second role is the role of a strategist right okay now we got the vision now how do you implement the vision to make the vision a reality right so we strategize and you know get the how going the how part going but i want to tell you the beyond the vision keeper vision caster and the strategist every leader has got a third role and the third role is the role of a cheer leader the role of a cheer leader right you can't outsource as leaders you can't outsource the responsibility of cheer leading to somebody you need to be cheer leading right and for us we you know we are brought up with a culture that when somebody does something big only then celebrate right not anybody can do but you know when people need most cheer leading when the going gets tough when each step is difficult when you're climbing uphill right when you're swimming against the tide and somebody is not yet achieved the goal but trying very hard that's when you need to find a reason to celebrate that's when you need to find you know to encourage him say i believe in you come on you can do this right and and encourage this person so you got to be willing to celebrate the progress okay i want to say two more points and i'm done the next lesson i want to bring your attention to the road to progress is loaded with obstacles and setbacks the road to progress is loaded with obstacles and setbacks you see just when we thought my daughter janita was making progress we would encounter another setback it was a perfect case of one step forward and four steps back this was the consistent trend so much so that after the fourth visit in the icu the staff in the icu said janita you're not going to come back to icu you know we don't want to see you here in fact she became so famous in that large institution because everybody was this call the doctors in their in their council meetings would be discussing her file because it they had not seen really a case like this i mean the kind of complications that actually came and that's not a exaggeration that's the reality uh, you know they they named a fighter they wouldn't call her janita and a the file they changed the name to fighter right and they would refer to her as a fighter you know her her condition was grave but somehow she would fight back somehow she would fight back one step forward four step back but again fight back right to me this lesson watching this fight that my daughter was fighting was a reiteration that indeed there cannot be progress in the absence of setbacks and obstacles if you are doing something worthwhile right it will be difficult you have to hear me somebody needs on this call needs to hear this line if you are pursuing a worthwhile goal it will be difficult what is the corollary to that if it is not difficult you are not pursuing a worthwhile goal change your goal change your goal right sorry for for uh, for for challenging you but that's the reality if it is difficult it will be worthwhile leaders understand that the hard the difficult and the tedious will always result in significant achievement leaders realize that the hard the difficult and the tedious will always end up in significance in significant achievement i want to share with you the last point before i open up and the last point is this your reward is contained in your perseverance your reward is contained 
in your perseverance. You know, I frankly they were was wasn't too sure whether my daughter will come out of CMC well or I wasn't sure because of just the diagnosis and uh, and 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 the and the helplessness. Because the doctors came to a point where the antibiotics that they gave her, they gave her the highest level of antibiotics, wasn't working, right? <clears throat> But after 88 days in the hospital, I told you five surgeries, four times on life support system, ICU, thousand pokes, almost more than thousand pokes for blood, right? Um, several tubes, um, Janita fighting off several near death experiences. She came out of that hospital, although in a wheelchair, although she was fragile, although she was very, very weak, and she had a she had a food tube that was in her in her stomach. Um, she came out of the hospital. But as she came out of the hospital, she had a new fight to start. And that fight was a battle against cancer. Now, she had to take on chemotherapy. She had to take on radiation and the likes of it. And as fragile as she was, after five rounds of chemotherapy, the doctors came and told me, we can't give chemotherapy anymore. I said, why? Why can't you give chemo? Cancer, chemo, that's the way it works, isn't it? She said, no, because the wound is opening up again. Now, the risk of giving chemo is more than the risk of not giving chemo. I mean, that's a bad situation to be in, right? And therefore, they said, the only thing we can do is let's try. We'll give you some tablets. Let her take these tablets. It's called oral chemo. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We went through that radiation. But I want to tell you, by the grace of God, uh, as we are in April, April 22nd, 21st, 21st, 2020, by the grace of God, it's been a little more than two years that my daughter has been cancer-free. She's back to her normal life. Uh, she's right now pursuing a 12th standard and preparing for her pre-medical exam. By God's grace, she wants to clear it to become a pediatric oncologist. And, and I think for me, the lesson here is that I realized that the reward is contained in your perseverance. And the closer you get to your finish line, the more difficult it will be. But that's when you need to plug in. That's when you need to continue. That's when you need to push through. You see, great leaders persevere, even as the headwinds blow fiercely against them. And if I had to look at a science kind of a illustration in my mind, although I'm not a great science student, is this, right? Um, the friction which is caused when perseverance collides with opposition, the friction that is caused when perseverance, your willingness to persevere, and, and that perseverance just collides with opposition, that is when growth becomes a reality and greatness becomes an outcome. Growth becomes a reality and greatness becomes an outcome. So, so this is my family. And... Uh, the girl here in black, uh, well, she is Janita. So by God's grace, uh, we are, she's well, we are well. And uh, it's been a difficult passage, but I'm, I'm thankful in a way that we have a story to share uh, and the lessons that we've learned. Um, and I've been sharing these lessons everywhere. And uh, yeah, and, and it's, I think people have written back saying, thank you for sharing because it's really helped me in achieving what I wanted to be achieving. I really hope that is the outcome for you as well. But before I close, let me quickly summarize the lessons. The certainty of life lies in its uncertainty. The importance of creating networks, learning, uh, leaning on strength from within and without, staying positive and doing what you need to do to stay afloat. Often it gets worse before it gets better. Adapt to the new normal instead of fighting the change. Be emotionally anchored. Celebrate progress. The road to progress is loaded with obstacles and setbacks. And remember, your reward is contained in your perseverance. Thank you so much. And uh, I hand it over to Jisha and Mr. Harish.